Hello everyone and welcome to the Sky Channel and also welcome to our class series. So in case you don't know, we have released two class videos up until now. One is on the Axe Warrior and the other is on the Crossbow class. And what I'm planning is that starting today up until the next three days, we will release another class video each day. So make sure you keep checking back in each day to see a video on another class. And hopefully if you watch the previous two and this one and then the next three, you will have a very good understanding of all classes and hopefully know a lot about how you can counter each of those classes because you know them so well. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check back in every day. So this video is going to be about the healer class line and we will cover the active skills, the passive skills, the selectable skills, pals, relics, souls, mounts, fruit bonuses that you can get, equipment, your artifacts, back accessories, and tech park bonuses. And in the end, I'll also teach you how you can save a lot of money on in-game purchases in The Legend of Mushroom. Okay, so another thing I want to mention is that I would love for you to share your own thoughts and your experiences in the comment section because information coming from one person is good, but information coming from a community is much, much better because you might have tested something that I haven't or you might have some theories which are very interesting, which I would love if you share in the comment section so everyone can benefit. Okay, jumping to the active skill. Deals 3794% damage, which is area effect damage, and extends the duration of basic attack stuns on targets within the range by 30%, lasting for 5 seconds. So that's basic attack stuns, not the stuns that you get from your skills. Now in the final evolution, of course, the damage goes up to 8536%. The 30% increase in the duration of stuns actually goes on for 8 seconds instead of 5, and you instantly break shields with your attacks within 10 seconds after releasing the skill. So goodbye to Shroom Shield. Now let's go to the passive skills. The first one increases your chances of skill criticals, which are great because, well, skills are where you're going to get a lot of your damage from, so this is amazing. The next one increases your attack by 12%, increasing your damage as well. The third one actually increases your energy regeneration for your skills, meaning that you can release them more often, which is amazing, given that, well, skills are your main source of damage. The next one actually increases the duration of your active skills by 50%. Excluding Blitz Assault, of course, the one that actually does some damage and then makes you immune to damage for 3 seconds. That one remains 3 seconds. It doesn't go up, but everything else, it actually goes up. And that's actually a very lovely passive skill, which you'll learn soon. Now in the final evolution, it also adds an extra damage of 30%, meaning that the skills do even more damage, which is lovely. And finally, every stun, regardless if it's basic attack stun or the ones that you do through your skills, it reduces the cooldown of all your active skills by 0.3 seconds. So you can already see what this class is all about. You want to use your stuns to live longer, to release more skills and you release a lot of skills because of the way your passive abilities are set and also because stuns not only help you live long enough to release more skills, they also enable you to release the skills more frequently, which is absolutely amazing. So you want to max out your stun chances and you want to max out the amount of damage that you can do from your skills. So let's start talking about the selectable skills. So we'll go over a bunch of them and then I'm going to tell you which ones I believe are the best five to pick at the end of that. So first two are, of course, Nature's Renewal and Shroom Shield, which are great for you to advance further, especially in the beginning. They both provide you a certain amount of survivability. Nature's Renewal heals you, Shroom Shield gives you a shield. Using them together can be a little tricky though because the first use of Nature's Renewal goes to waste because, well, you have full HP and you have a shield. And by the time you get to the next Nature's Renewal, it's about 25 seconds, which is a long time. Easy Breezy and Take It Slow allow you to live a little bit longer by reducing the enemy's attack or, of course, the attack speed. Meteor Fall is great because it increases your skill damage and you are all about skill damage. Disarm, of course, also helps you live longer by disarming the enemy for 3 seconds, while Dazzled it actually stuns the enemy for 1.5 seconds and this is actually very useful because remember you are built around stuns 
Stunning actually allows you to reskills more often, so this becomes one of the must-haves that we're going to talk about at the end. Smoke Bomb is great because it increases the amount of damage that you can do to the enemies by 30%. And of course, all the numbers that you see, like 5 seconds, remember that we have a passive thing that extends the duration by 50%. So it's not really 5 seconds for this one, it's 7.5 seconds. Heroic Descent is a little interesting. So it actually, in a way, counters your biggest weakness, which is this skill, Blitz Assault, so when somebody releases this skill, they do a ton of damage, but they also become immune to damage for three seconds. So your first release of all of your skills go to waste. And as you can imagine, that hurts mages a lot. But Heroic Descent lasts for 10 seconds, so you still get seven seconds of damage despite the Blitz Assault. So an interesting choice if you are facing mages. Wild Gust is good because, well, it does some damage, but then it also increases your attack by 15%, which is helpful. Blitz Assault, as we talked about, it is something that's crucial if you're fighting mages because it just makes their first set of skill releases go to waste. So very helpful skill for you to have. Clone Strike is quite powerful, especially for other classes, but also for you because it generates a clone with 30% of your health. So it's already better than having a Shroom Shield, but it also deals damage to the enemy using basic attacks. So this is quite helpful and I'd probably put this as a must have as well. Crimson Moonfall. This is one of your deadliest damage dealing skill. It deals 2098% damage in the first one, but then each successive cast increases the damage by 50%, stacking up to three times. Now it already has a very small cooldown period of eight seconds, but with your stuns and with your ability to gain energy faster, you're gonna be releasing this much more often. So you will stack it up really fast and the damage will be huge. So you definitely need to have Crimson Moonfall. It's one of the must haves in my opinion. Blade Base is sort of interesting as well because it deals a bunch of damage and then the enemy loses 1.5% of their max HP per second for 5 seconds but for you it's 7.5 seconds so if you're dealing with a tanky enemy this can be quite helpful. Finally Star Array. It deals a reasonable amount of damage and then increases your skill crit rate by 10% which you desperately need because you're all about dealing damage through skills and crits actually increase the damage by a lot. Not just that, for every 1% of your skill crit rate, you gain an additional 3% skill crit damage. Now you probably have a bunch of skill crit rate already, in addition to the 10% that it just added. So imagine the amount of skill crit damage you're getting from this skill, and it lasts for five seconds, well, it lasts for seven and a half seconds because of your passive ability. So this is an absolute must have for your class. So if I were to pick five, and of course, this is my opinion, you should test things out for your own self. But if I were to pick five, I would definitely have Star Array in there. Absolutely necessary for your class. Crimson Moonfall for that deadly amount of damage that stacks up really fast and releases it so often. Blitz Assault, because you might be facing some mages and you want to make sure that you waste their first skill releases. Clone Strike to help you live longer, because well, the longer you live, the more skills you release. And probably Dazzled because it gives you stun and stun allows you to not only live longer but also release skills more often. That's my pick of five. Let me know if you've tested things out and you think differently. Share it in the comments below so everyone can learn from you as well. All right, it's time to talk about pals. Well, first of all, let's talk about the treasure dragon. So of course, it's a pink pal, so it has a reasonably high damage and attack speed. But look at the deploy effect. Increases basic attack crit damage by 50%, which is okay, but look at the next one. Increases your skill crit rate by 20%. Now remember, you're getting most of your damage from skills, and well, criticals increase the damage by a lot, so you definitely want to have as much skill crit rate as possible, especially because when you add this up with the star array, you're also increasing your skill crit damage by an extra 60%. So this works really well together. So an absolute must have for your class. Next up, the Alpine Fox. Look at the deploy effect. Extend stun duration by 30% and deal 25% extra damage to stunned enemies. Now, of course, we mentioned that stun is very important for your class, so you will be building a lot of stun chances. The extension of the stun duration by 30% is very helpful because it helps you live longer and therefore release the skills more often. And of course, 25% extra damage to stunned enemies means that your skills will deal even more damage to the enemies who are stunned and hopefully a lot of your enemies are going to be stunned very often. So another absolute must have for this class. 
Next, I'm going to jump to Warlord Hydra Sprite. This is very important for your class as well because it increases your active skill energy regeneration. And as you remember, you're all about releasing skills very often. And the Warlord Hydra Sprite is all about helping you release the skills more often. And as you can imagine, all of the active skill energy regenerations that you have with your passive skills. And of course, because of the stuns, all of this adds up so you can be releasing skills very very often so another must have for your class fiery tail gives you extra skill damage and as you know skills are what you are all about so you do want to have this with you as well and then there's cat prince and essentially after you use active skills it helps you deal 200 percent extra damage to the enemies and remember you'll be releasing skills very very often so this will be a lot of damage that's going to add up these are probably my five favorite ones, but you know what? There are also others that are okay, like the Weldy Lizard increasing your pal damage. You could potentially build on this as well. And then there's Hipster Tortoise, also fairly useful because it helps you gain a shield and helps you live longer. But I would probably stick with those five if you have them. Moving on to our relics. The first one... And your obvious choice here is going to be Demon's Mask, increasing your skill crit rate by 5%. Now remember, whenever you hear skill crit rate, also think about the fact that you are not only getting skill crit rate, you're also getting skill crit damage because of Star Array when you release that skill. Now when you go to the blue ones, I would probably pick the Thundercaller Kite. After the release of your active skills, it summons lightning, dealing 309% damage. And while this damage actually goes up as you enhance this further, so this can become an extremely deadly relic, especially because you release your skills so often that this builds up to a very high amount of damage. For the purple relic, I'd probably choose the Metamorphic Crystal because it increases the attack speed of your fox, which you definitely should have. You could also choose the magic box if you want to increase the damage of your cat. For the yellow relics, I would probably choose the Stone Red Tomb for some additional survivability. Or you could go with the Flame Book if you love the extra attack and want to deal some more damage to the enemy. For the orange relic, I'd probably go with this one because it extends the duration of your star array by 50% and you know how cool star array is and you want to extend it by as much as possible because you can deal a lot of extra damage to the enemy while the star array is active. So definitely go with this one. Finally, the red relics, you probably want to choose the Abyss Necklace because it increases the damage of Crimson Moonfall by 30%. You already know how deadly Crimson Moonfall is because it releases so often and it does so much damage and it increases its own damage every time you release it. You want to add that 30% extra to it to make it an extremely deadly skill. So definitely the Abyss Necklace for this one. Moving over to our souls, the Eye of the Abyss, its base was a critical damage bonus soul, but you add the skill critical damage to it. So this is definitely a must have. And you can imagine skill critical damage is something that you really need. So this would become a very important soul for you to prioritize in your soul fusion. The other one is the Wildfire Piercer. The base soul is a basic attack damage bonus soul and you need to fuse it with the skill damage soul and that gives you a 45.15% additional skill damage at level 1 and as you can imagine skill damage is something that's extremely important for you so you definitely want to get this fusion in and you want to start using this to get the extra skill damage. Finally the attack soul is also fairly helpful for you to increase your damage. All right, let's talk about the mounts. Now, mounts are absolutely amazing because they give such huge bonuses in your health, attack, and defense. And they also grant you some evasion, which is helpful because it allows you to live longer. And the longer you live, the more skills that you can release. If you go to the next step, you can also empower your mount. And well, if you empower it, it gives one of these three bonuses to you. However, you don't know which one you're going to get. It's completely random. Of course, your eye should be on the additional skill damage because you deal most of your damage through your skills. Now, if you go to the advanced tab, you'll notice that you can actually get advanced mounts. And for you, the Cloud Drifter is actually pretty useful because it increases your skill crit rate by 10%. And after a skill critical, it boosts your attack by 20% for 5 seconds. We already talked about how important getting additional skill crit rate is, so you can see how this can be very valuable. Another great thing is that you can actually get this for free if you collect 20 Skyrider passes. If you're having trouble collecting them, check out the Rush video, which talks about which resources you should save, allowing you to rank high in your Rush events and getting these Skyrider passes. 
Now, as the name suggests, the magic carpet is also great for your class because after casting skills six times, it restores the full energy of one of your random skills so you can instantly release another random skill. Given how you're all about releasing skills very often, this can help you quite a lot. The mounts also give you a mount effect, and actually what I found is that once you unlock the mount, this effect is always active. And of course, thank you to somebody who mentioned this in the comments in one of my videos. So you don't need to actually have one of these active, you just need to unlock the advanced mount and you get this global attack bonus, which is always on. All right, now let's talk about the fruit bonuses. And here you want to go skill damage all the way through because you are all about that skill damage. So I guess it's pretty obvious that that's the one you should be focusing on for your fruit bonuses. If you end up getting some attack and you wanna keep it, that's fine as well because attack also helps you out with your damage. But in my opinion, focusing all five on skill damage is probably the best for you. Alrighty, going over to our gear. Now remember the two most important attributes for you that you probably know by now is kill crit rate and stun. So you want to try to get your gear maximizing on your skill crit rate and stun because skill crit rate helps you deal a lot of damage, stun helps you live longer, but also helps you release skills more often. So these are your two most important stats and you should try to get your gear focusing on these two stats. Now one thing I do want to mention is that another community member decided to go ahead and reduce the rarity of their equipment when they switched to a new class. And as a result, they lost a huge amount of health, attack, and defense, and that actually hurt them in the arena. So you do want to make sure that you continue to use rainbow level gear if you are rainbow and try to get those two attributes without actually reducing the quality of your equipment. Now, if you already have the golden equipment, then you want to try to get these two attributes on golden equipment and not actually drop to rainbow equipment because that does happen to harm you when it comes to your health, attack, and defense. So try your best to get those on the max level gear that you can. All right, talking about the artifacts, they're another amazing way of getting a lot of health, attack, and defense, making it quite helpful, and also helps you ignore evasion, which is, again, a good way to make sure the enemy can't dodge all of your attacks. But if you go to the Morph tab, you will notice that you can actually get advanced artifacts. And in my opinion, the Eye of Raven seems to be the best one, allowing you to cast an equipped active skill at random every 20 seconds. And the first one, of course, comes two seconds after the battle starts. And for all you know, it could be Star Array, increasing your skill crit rate and skill crit damage by a large amount. So definitely my favorite artifact for this class. It also gives you global health, which you'll get once you unlock it, and that should be always active. All right, moving over to back accessories, which is something new that just got released. It gives you amazing ways to get a lot of attack, health, and defense. And when it comes to which one you should be upgrading, my recommendation is upgrade all of them equally. The big reason is because as you can see, from level 30 to level 31, the increase in attributes is huge. So every 10 levels, you get a very huge jump in attributes, making even upgrades quite helpful for you. The other thing is as you keep on upgrading them to certain levels, you unlock an additional tail. And as you unlock all of the tails, you get an extra level for each of your feather, which is helpful as well. Moving over to the talents tab, I think that the bottom right stream is quite helpful because it gives you additional skill crit damage, which is of course very helpful for you and also increases your stun duration, which is another thing that helps you live much longer. Next, when you move over to the wings, I find that the Moonlit Wisp is primarily built for your class because when the battle begins, every time you release an active skill, your skill damage goes up by 1.5% and that stacks 10 times. So by the time you've released 10 skills, which you should do fairly fast given your class, you'll be at an increase of 15% skill damage, which is very, very helpful for you. Finally, the tech park is a wonderful place for you to get a lot of health, attack, and defense. And I want to make sure that you all are maximizing getting these base stats from the tech park because it makes a huge difference and makes you much, much stronger. So do not ignore the tech park. So make sure you are upgrading your tech park every tech rush. Now, of course, you do want to make sure that you are saving the up until tech rush so you can get those 8,000 hammers. As you can see, it was tech rush right now, and I've already completed it because I 
has stored ore for the right moment. If you're interested in knowing how much ore, check out our rush video which talks about each of the rush events and how much of each resources you should be stockpiling to maximize each of the rush event. Of course, you should probably be going over that because you do want to be ranking high in the rush ranking and getting those extra Skyrider passes for the Cloud Drifter if you don't already have it. Awesome. And since I still have you here, I want you to know that you can get between 10 to 35% bonus on in-game purchases in the Legend of Mushroom, allowing you to save a lot of money if you're into spending in-game. There are also some amazing days, which are essentially the bonus days, and the upcoming one is on April 26th, which gives you an extra 5% bonus to your base, meaning that you will get a minimum of 15% bonus on that day, so you can maximize that and get stuff much cheaper. I'm going to link a video in the description below which will go through the whole process in detail with you so you can start saving up today. If you liked the video, please like, please subscribe to our channel so that you can get notified when we release the other class videos that you might want to check out so you learn more about how you can tackle each of the different classes and then you can start teaching it to others. Make sure to drop a note in the comment section if you liked the video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.